welcome to episode 114, Free and Immersive Education for All, From Greece to the World. This is a story of creativity, of enthusiasm, passion, dedication, talent, persistence, opportunities, and purpose. We have three guests with us today, Yanis, George, and Augustus, who are going to talk to us from International Hellenic University in Greece. They're going to be describing a program or multiple programs and technologies and resources, not only for Greek educators and computer science instructors throughout the country, 82,000 of them, but hopefully, hopefully for the world community. That's what this is about, spreading the word about what's happening internationally that can have an impact on anybody, any, especially computer science educators throughout the world. So, Augustus, would you like to share with us kind of an overview of what you've been doing there in Greece? And then we'll get into three demonstrations that will take four or five minutes each, and then we'll open it up for questions. Augustus? Yes. Thank you very much, Kurt, and the uh, rest of the hosts here. It's our honor to be here, and thank you for the invitation. I'm going to share my screen and start the presentation as well. Uh, give me a second. Hopefully you can see my presentation. Uh, we came from uh, Aetma Lab the and the Computing Science Department of uh, uh, International Hellenic University. And we are located in Greece. Uh, you can see the north part of Greece uh, in uh, uh, Kavala. Uh, and uh, our lab is uh, associated with research uh, dealing with uh, immersive technologies in education, wearables, uh, Internet of Things, and uh, distance education. Um, I at my lab in numbers, um, um, I think uh, during the, the, the last four years, we have a, uh, an explosion of members related to our uh, uh, lab. We are more than 40 members are involved in 24 projects. And you can see a big number of uh, uh, books, publication, and uh, budget regarding the research we are doing and all of these are associated with immersive technologies. Uh, in the last uh, four years, we received uh, a number of awards, uh, including one UNESCO award for the platform that uh, George Terzopoulos is going to demonstrate it, uh, a little bit uh, later, they are tutor. Here you can see most of the um, applications and uh, the platforms that uh, we are um, uh, giving to for free in uh, to, to the for the educators not only in Greece but in Europe and in the rest of uh, um, the globe. And uh, today we're going to talk about AR Tutor, the project of Visual School, and um, of course the professional training. Also, we host an MSc degree on immersive technologies uh, that is um, available across the globe as well. Uh, I'm going to start right away with the project of Visual School. I'm going to uh, minimize this so you can have a, a look of uh, the whole screen. Uh, Virtual School was a project that uh, was inspired from a disastrous uh, fire in Athens uh, back in 2018, where uh, almost a uh, hundred of years, uh, people died. Among them, there were two twin sisters, and just to honor them, we gave their initials, uh, Vasiliki and Sophia, in the project of Virtual School. They were all, uh, nine years old, and we built up this project in order to enable students to uh, um, uh, get a better training on how to interact in case of emergency. Uh, so the goal of uh, virtual school, uh, um, as uh, it was started back in 2019, was to use uh, mixed reality experience and build a 3D model of using augmented reality. They can play in uh, different scenarios uh, for example, if you are located in this uh, upper uh, class and uh, there is a fire next in the next class, uh, what you are going to do? So it's uh, according to the different kind of solutions. Uh, they could use their tablet and using augmented reality to find out what is the best uh, option to take in order to escape uh, the school or to escape a case of uh, disaster. Uh, I think that um, virtual school was one of the very first uh, mixed reality projects that happened in Greece, uh, and uh, it was really uh, successful. Uh, you can see some uh, snapshots of the uh, um, schools that uh, participated 
in Greece and Cyprus, uh, and including those schools, there was one, the, the most remote school in Europe with uh, only one student and one teacher. Uh, and uh, we pick up, uh, we select this school because if the project was successful in such remote area, it means this project could be applied in any school in Europe. So uh, um, the first result of the virtual school was uh, very impressive uh, because we, uh, we, was, there was a mental shift of almost 90% in the, uh, in the student attitude. So the, the impact uh, on how to react in, um, in case of emergency has been increased positively almost 90%. Uh, out of the success of this project, we received an, an award uh, from a uh, European Commission, where uh, the uh, European uh, Commissioner, uh, Mr. Smialidis, uh, gave an award uh, to us and to the schools that participated in this project, and uh, also from Educational Leader Awards 2020, and uh, Virtual School became uh, an official training uh, program in Greece uh, under the um, permission of the Ministry of Education. Uh, virtual school uh, is expanding uh, during uh, uh, the last uh, two years. So we are including uh, using uh, funds from uh, Europe and uh, from primary um, uh, organizations. We are in, uh, expanding uh, this uh, program to the rest of uh, Balkans and to the rest of Europe. And also uh, uh, through uh, public, uh, through private uh, funding uh, from a uh, foundation of Las Caridis, we are building up a, a virtual environment of virtual school. So to attract students um, uh, that are, um, let's say, uh, between uh, in seven years old. So uh, uh, we, we build up a virtual reality environment, not uh, a 3D the model of the school, we build a, a virtual reality environment where students will be immersed in this project, in this uh, environment, and uh, they're gonna mimic the appropriate behavior in case of disasters uh, by watching and monitoring what's happening uh, and what, how the, the, their classmates are reacting. You can see here, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a, a snapshot. Uh, and also this program can also include different kinds of scenarios like uh, bullying or, uh, uh, discrimin uh, discriminations, uh, social discriminations, and so on. So that's all on my part. We are very excited to be here, and I'm going to give the floor to George or Kurt back to in order to uh, uh, continue the, the whole uh, process. That sounds great. So who's next? Is it George or Giannis? George? I think it's George, yeah. Okay. I'm just sharing my screen. I think you can all see it. So uh, I'm going to talk a little about the AR Tutor platform, and I'm going to show you a demo video of it. Uh, just a few words to present it. Uh, the AR Tutor platform is a, a platform that can be used in order to create an, an AR experience. Uh, as we all know, AR combines the real world with the digital world, so it added it adds uh, digital content in the real world. This is augmented reality. The first step that someone uh, needs to do is to go to artutor.ehu.gr and register. It's free registration, or if he already he or she has have an account, they can just log in. Then. We, the, the AR experience, we call it a book. So someone creates books and uh, augments them. So the, the second step is to upload the PDF file, and which is a book, and then select specific parts of that book that will be augmented. So digital content can be played on top of them when they are scanned by the mobile uh, phone. And the final step is to view what you have created or what others have created in the uh, AR Tutor mobile application. For example, we see here, uh, this image of the Greek map is uh, scanned and uh, four items are displayed over uh, the printed paper. So we have images, videos, models, and some text. So what can you add as augmentations are images, sounds, videos, YouTube videos, URL links, and 3D models. Uh, now, 
AR tutor can be used, of course, for educational purposes, but it's domain independent. So not only computer science teachers can use it, uh, also from other domains can, uh, can be used. Uh, what an educator can do is to add some interactive content on printed material, which is static. Uh, you can create outdoor experiences like a treasure hunt. So students uh, will scan something with their phone and the, the augmentation will be triggered. We're working now for a GPS location based experience. So educators can also do uh, this type of activities. Or if you are in a closed environment in a school, for example, you can create an escape room activity. So the clues will be scanned again by the mobile phone and uh, the students will solve the puzzles in order to exit the room. Of course, AR tutor can be used outside education, like marketing, publishing, training, or in museum exhibitions, which is uh, AR is used a lot. So let's see AR tutor in a small video, the result of what someone uh, has created using the AR Tutor platform. So one can, someone can download the application and then go search for the experience, uh, for example, a Greek history book that I have created. Of course, you can search for uh, uh, books that others have created. Not only uh, you can always see others' books. Uh, you don't have to be registered in order to uh, use the, the mobile app. So if you select the book you want, then the camera opens and waits for the specific images to be scanned. You can uh, always see what you can scan. So when the camera detects this image, the augmentation pops up and it's fully interactable. You can uh, zoom in, zoom out, rotate. Uh, of course, uh, this is a, an example where an image is displayed over a printed image. But uh, you can also uh, use it with videos, as it's the next, the next example, or 3D models. We can see here a 3D model of a vase on top of the printed material. So this is fully interactable. Um, next, I'm going to run it a little. We can see a video displayed on top of printed material. Uh, we can pause the video, we can rewind, we can view it in full screen. And uh, one of the other features that we have now is that the video can be uh, also placed in a surface. Uh, now you can see it in full screen, so you can see it, zoom in, zoom out, and of course rotate it. Moving on, we can also have uh, YouTube links that will pop out when something is uh, detected, like this one. All of these are done in the web interface. The mobile application only displays the whole experience. And as I said before, you cannot, you, you don't have to be registered. So we have here the, the ability to place documentation on any surface. Here it scans the surface of my desk, for example, and it places the model without the need of detecting uh, the, the image all the time. So uh, an educator can add 3D models on, a, on the top of the desk, for example, in the classroom. Uh, of course, we can have audio augmentation. For example, this is a sound that is played uh, when this image is detected. This is from the disaster of Smyrny. And let's see. Ah, here we have the, the case where complex augmentations can be used, can be created. So here we have uh, the example I showed that we have four augmentations that are played simultaneously on the same uh, scanned image. Uh, so here we have a video, an image, and all of them can be played and interacted uh, separately. And finally, Okay, you can see each of the augmentations separately. Images, okay. And finally, I'm again placing something, an image, for example, on a desk, and I can remove the paper and it is there because it is placed on the surface. So this is the AR Tutor platform. Of course, it can uh, do much more than that, but I have very limited time, 
So <laughs> I'm trying to demonstrate all of the features. Uh, I haven't demonstrated yet the, the GPS location features. Then when you go outside and you see the augmentation in front of you. So this is uh, features that uh, already incorporated in AR tutorial. Well, that's why I included your email addresses in the blog post. So if anyone's interested in watching the show later, go to the blog post for the show. All three of their emails are in there and you can contact them. There are actually 10 different projects as Vaskas uh, told us. We're going to see one more and then we're going to quest, go into questions. So Giannis is going to show us the third one, which is going to bring us into the corporate sector. But keep in mind, there are seven projects they're not showing us and probably many more in their brains. Uh, so go ahead, Giannis. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm going to present you a case study about uh, industrial training. Uh, in our university, we have the uh, so-called uh, advanced virtual crisis control room uh, operations. Actually, this is a room uh, uh, that we are trying to uh, train uh, rescue teams, security uh, staff, industry staff in various disaster scenarios. And this room is uh, comprised by the main Oh, sorry, by the main control room operations where the, the trainees uh, go there and uh, this is a simulation of a control room of an industry and can be educated in various scenarios uh, at this uh, specific industry. Uh, we have also another sub room, the dispatch center, where the educators can uh, simulate the um, communication with external services, external public services uh, during a disaster. And uh, also there is another room where we have the, the trainers room and, the, and developers room where uh, the trainers uh, watch the trainees and uh, activate uh, or updating the scenarios uh, on the fly. Uh, so uh, this is a photo from a, a training scenario. Um, uh, you can see here the trainees that uh, are acting uh, according to the scenario. But uh, and uh, you can see here one trainee that is uh, is communicating uh, with a person from the field. Till now we had not uh, uh, write images from the field. We had a specific trainer uh, to make uh, that is a person from the field, and uh, the trainee here uh, called uh, this person. Uh, so what we have done, we tried uh, to, uh, to use uh, immersive technologies and specific virtual reality technology in order to allow uh, the, tra the trainees to make specific uh, operations on the field. Uh, so using virtual reality in training, we immerse trainees into the field. Uh, we provide them active experience rather than just passive information. Uh, help them to understand complex concepts uh, and simulate a number of disasters. And also the trainers can create infinite number of scenarios and monitor uh, trainees' actions. Uh, uh, also, in order to make this uh, simulation even more experiential, uh, we use these uh, VR-free gloves that allow the trainees not just to use the VR headset uh, for example, Oculus and uh, the remote controls, but instead of this, to use their hands uh, in order to make all the appropriate actions into the field. So I want now to share with you a short demonstration uh, uh, with um, uh, what is happening uh, with the system, uh, with the VR system. So you can see here uh, two screens. At the left is the screen of the trainees and at the right is the screen of the trainers where we have a, a control panel and the trainer can activate specific scenarios for example rain thunders uh, fire mega fire etc uh, at the left you can see what the trainees the trainer the trainees show uh, every time so uh, here the trainer is going to activate the fire and mega fire scenario. I think you can hear uh, also the alarm, uh, the fire, etc. And uh, the trainee is now to take the six factors to avoid the uh, disaster. So here we can see another bit of pain. Uh, we have to make test compression. 
systems uh, through a virtual room but also to check what they have uh, they had uh, have to do also in the field uh, and that's all uh, for me thank you very much thank you Giannis. that was great that's the first time we've had an emergency in the middle of the show uh <laughs> <laughs> and you handled it well. Uh, I think we're going to go with Chris. Chris is a, our resident expert on silver lining for learning in VR. And he's done much research over the past decades in the area and had many grants. And, and I've been to a few of his presentations. So I'm, I'm sure I'll have many questions, but he'll start with, with one right now. Chris? Yeah, I, I want to start with one right now because I want to make sure that all of us have a chance for a dialogue. You, you certainly have demonstrated some really interesting tools for design of different kinds of, of VR and, and design without necessarily having really strong technical capabilities, which is of course a limit in terms of both personnel and cost. Um, I'm wondering what kinds of research you've done on the environments that you've created. And some of that research might be what did people learn? And some of that research might be comparative studies. So I've got the book with the enhancements. I've got the book without the enhancements. What kind of differences, if any, are there in, in what people are learning? So I'd, I'd love to hear um, the, the research dimensions that you're doing and, and some of the findings that you think are interesting. Uh, are you are you asking for a specific project? Because Yanis can take the floor and ask for a and a reply regarding VR, and uh, George can reply for AR tutor and can reply for virtual school. Yeah, Yanis, just 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 quick quick illustrations of of what you found. Yeah. yeah okay, Yanis, go first. Uh, just to let you know that uh, we have done a, a number of uh, review uh, reviews. Uh, through papers into scientific uh, through scientific articles in uh, in uh, journals international journals and also uh, this uh, was uh, before the application uh, and the design of these uh, case studies and uh, after uh, uh, the completion completion of, and the, after the implementation uh, we have done uh, regarding the specific this the VR control room uh, virtual control room. Uh, for uh, for now, we have done some uh, um, um, uh, some specific uh, small case uh, uh, scenarios and pilots, and uh, we're on during the next uh, let's say academic year, we are going to apply it to a number of uh, trainees uh, all around uh, Europe. First, go ahead regarding AR tutor. And then I'm going to reply for a virtual school. Uh, the the AR tutor was uh, is is building constantly, and uh, it's a, it's an ongoing process since 2016. Uh, we have also seen the so-called competition. So in order to see what features are available, what the technology can do, because there are some companies like Google and Apple that are driving the technology that we can use in order to build applications based on their uh, on their platforms. Uh, so um, we have also done uh, literature reviews of what, uh, a, how AR can be used. Uh, we are in constant uh, connection with educators and uh, we are listening all the time what features 
should should we do uh, what content uh, should we add uh, how can we make this uh, this product it's a free product but it's still, it's still a product what how can we make it more useful for uh, and more easy to use so we, we are not building uh, the, the 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 platform keeping in mind that a computer science teacher will use it uh, we're thinking uh, kids uh, uh, teachers and, and all all of them so okay thanks to george uh, just an addition to this i think that uh, uh, control room is a, is, a, is an area that uh, the chemical department of uh, international hellenic university owns so we are in cooperation with them so we are trying to train uh, um, people from oil industry there and in AR tutor we have uh, almost uh, 10,000 uh, users already and we have course more than uh, 10 or 15 i think phd the ongoing phd's right now and um, uh, uh, all the, uh, the the results of using AR as part of educational activity is quite encouraging if that's what we are asking Chris and according to the findings that we had in virtual school because uh, this was uh, this project uh, uh, has specific measures about the, the impact the, the impact that we have in the students uh, the average impact positive impact a impact of uh, uh, mixed reality training uh, is between uh, 78 and 92 percent better than the training without those technologies so punya has got a question for you and I might add to that Punya, you want to jump in sure um, so I just a question around if you have any sort of data or anything collected around student learning around the content that you're trying to teach um you know i'm just curious about that and yeah yeah and to add to that you know what variables do you look at when you talk about learning there for these different projects what is it what is it that you're measuring uh, that 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 depends specifically on the project because if you're talking about they are tutor uh, um, it is a platform that many educators can use, so it's up to them to measure, to make those measurements that are uh, feasible for their studies. So uh, when what we are trying to measure with Air Tutor, for example, is the pervasiveness of technology, the, the, uh, how uh, um, the, the engagement of the students, and because Air Tutor specifically is designed to make uh, students part of content developers, not just uh, being, let's say, uh, uh, passive receivers of the information or of documentation, because AR Tutor is a platform that permits collaborative augmented reality uh, uh, setup. It's the only platform in Europe that permits this. So you can have a group of students working together collaboratively to build up an AR technology. And just to mention that AR Tutor can be used either in printed material or in digital material make no difference so uh, that gives uh, um, huge uh, uh, let's say uh, competencies to the students and uh, to the teachers to use their tutor uh, paperless uh, and i'm going to give the floor to janice if he has some uh, comments about uh, the control yeah. mm -hmm. uh, also in a uh many uh, cases uh, we have run till now we check about the motivation uh, of the students the satisfaction uh, the learning effectiveness uh, using these tools and of course uh, every time we also check uh, the ease of use and the usefulness according to the technology acceptance model as well uh, so as to know if they are going to intend uh, to, they intend uh, to use the system at the future uh, uh, and how useful is uh, for them George, you have anything to add about what you're looking at in terms of learning? Uh, I think we're, we're covered, but uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, pedagogy behind the uh, augmented reality. We're currently in a project, uh, IPIR, which is peer learning approach with augmented reality. So uh, we're not currently looking about how to improve technology, but how the technology can be used by educators. So we're gonna provide guidelines and things to do for educators. So we are not only providing the platform and we are currently building a, a case study repository on how specifically can be used because we, we now give some general guidelines how to use uh, the technology. 
but uh, in the in the next uh, academic year we will currently we will uh, uh, come in contact with many educators and uh, provide uh, and build the case study repository so everyone can add or see take ideas from there now i've seen pop up books before i think someone at nyu was building those a decade ago um, maybe his name was cap i believe and i've also seen uh, open source augmented reality tools from some way Mikhail formiath or i believe is his name so are, are you building a similar tool to what Mikhail is building are you competing with his are you are these separate open source augmented reality systems i mean what what makes yours unique or different and why would people want to use it um i can take the floor and then give it back to george uh, it's not an open source it's, a, it's an open access tool okay but uh, i would have to mention this that is free for educators across uh, across the globe everybody can use it for free even even if it is a student or if, if it is a teacher uh, what makes the, uh, us unique is that we are building this having in mind the educational needs and how this can be used in everyday educational practice and i think some uh, futures uh, some uh, some features already released in version 4 because right now we are uh, in version 4 of air tutor have been incorporated according to the needs of the educators that we received during the past year not only from greece but from other areas of the world as well george the floor is to you uh, compared to the competition so-called competition uh, we've seen all of the other platforms that are, that are around uh, of course uh, ar is a popular uh, topic right now so uh, constantly uh, there there will be uh, many platforms that are going to appear uh, in the next years and many of them will disappear so as it is the case so um, the 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 difference with the ar tutor the difference um, um, with other tools is that it, it's very easy to use uh, now it's currently translated in nine languages so it can be used by uh, by many uh, and i think and, and the, the result is uh, very uh, satisfactory to, 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 the, to, the, to the average educator. So if you see the environment and how uh, you can build an AR experience, it's, it's, it, it takes only two minutes or three minutes, for example, to build something and to see it with AR Tutor. And I think this is the, 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 the difference with other uh, platforms. Of course, as Mr. Sinako said, we're, we're, we have added some collaborative uh, abilities to, to the platform and many students at the same time can create an augmented book so they, they can have uh, uh, the same printed material and add uh, all of them content uh, on top of that. And now we are, uh, we are uh, adding uh, uh, treasure hunt activities and this type that include outdoor activities that we couldn't have due to COVID. So uh, here in Greece and I think in, in all, of, uh, all, all countries, uh, there are many uh, teachers that want to have uh, to take an educational uh, trip and to make it more interactive rather than, and we have the, the, these examples uh, in, uh, in our uh, website where uh, teachers from Greece have done that and they have, have printed uh, material and they visited some places and the students were very happy and it, it wasn't so boring, for example, even for Greece with the, with the history of it. So, Maybe this is the silver lining for learning, that learning isn't so boring now after COVID yeah, yeah. and we make it interactive with these open access uh, augmented reality and virtual reality kinds of tools. Young has got a question, then Chris has a question, and I have a question. Our audience probably has a question. So we're going to jump in and go to Young. Well, thank you. Um, so mine is really um, a, a question that everybody asks, that uh, as I want to us to have a possibly kind of a dialogue, like Chris was suggesting. You know, we have, uh, whenever there is a new technology, uh, we will see beautiful uh you know demonstrations of this 
I, I don't know if you guys remember the hypercard, remember a uh, data visualization, remember, you know, second life, uh, remember, you know, iBook came out and you know, we can make books. Just, just remember almost everybody when they had grant funding, they can demonstrate it's doing great. It was wonderful, right? And since 1990s, you know, we've invested hundreds of billions of dollars in schools, probably more than that, you know, making sure our children are connected, not only connected, they have six computers in one classroom connected, 10 megabytes. Now we want everybody to be highly connected in 100 megabytes. So, so we've seen all of this. It's definitely wonderful. I'm not saying your work is not meaningful. It's definitely beautiful. However, we really haven't seen any massive changes. In fact, many schools, many governments are banning the use of iPad or phones in schools. So yes, if schools are not restructured, none of this would actually matter that much. I'm sure you work with a lot of schools, a lot of teachers, you got to figure it out. You got, they have to fit in their class, their curriculum, their testing. Right, so, so you have to, any of the new things is really, it, they're all beautiful. They have great, wonderful potential, but they are in service of the school, the existing structure, the existing teacher, the existing content, almost no matter what you do that can change that. You know, we've been doing this, you know, I'm getting old, but I still remember everything where we did, you know, and we were all excited, you know, none of the time we're not excited, right? We got really beautiful things. I'm sure Chris has a lot of examples. Kurt, you have a lot of examples. Punia, you have a lot of examples of coming out of this. So I was really wondering if out of the European Union, when they gave you the money, did they ask you to say, can we build a new type of school, a new type of class, rather than just to say, you know, in this content we have this, let's build a little AR, make a learn a little bit of fun, but most likely when the money ends in 20, in yours, 2025, if you don't continue, this will stop. That's very likely. So, so I was just wondering if any of you, George, you know, Giannis and uh, I've got us, if you guys want to comment on that. And of course, I welcome uh, Kurt Pune and uh, Chris to jump in on this as well. It's a no end conversation. I just want this conversation to be had. Okay, can I comment first if that's okay? Okay, uh, thank you for the question, Yang. I think um, uh, that uh, gives me the floor uh, to comment on the previous uh, issues uh, raised by Kurt uh, and say that we are not competing with anyone because we are building something in order to make immersive technology available for everybody and for free. This is our vision. So uh, we are not competing with any industry or any private, uh, let's say, uh, 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 research initiative. And uh, we would like to make this technology enhanced learning available for uh, students and teachers across the globe, regardless of their socioeconomic status. So again, we are not depend on uh, the European Commission funding to continue this project, for sure. This is uh, an issue that many educational systems are faced with. We have on one hand technology running with the speed of light, and on the other hand, we have those educational systems that remain restricted in the, in the framework that belongs to the previous decades. So this, is, there is a, this difference between the competencies and digital skills of the, uh, of the, the new the generation Z, we are calling the new generation, and the generation we belong, uh, let's say uh, we are prehistorian uh, teachers, according to the youngsters right now. So uh, uh, I think the students have already overcome this barrier because they are not waiting for the Ministry of Education or for their, uh, let's say, uh, educational framework to incorporate technology in their classes. They are using either if it is permitted or not permitted, they are using it. What we are trying to do is to provide a new way of accessing this technology for free, not without having to spend, let's say, 2,000 euros per month to, to hold out uh, an AR, uh, let's say, scenario or an AR activity. And for sure, there are many initiatives in Europe 
uh, European school net uh, is, is a big organization uh, that invests a lot of money in this mental shift on how uh, immersive technologies can be part of the educational activity. But uh, it is uh, true that in many uh, areas across the globe, and we have uh, two books published, published on this, uh, uh, testing what are the, let's say, the rules per educational system across different uh, geographical areas. Many, rule, many areas still are banning mobile phones and smartphones throughout the classroom. But this is not the reason of stopping this part of education because the, the benefits are much more than uh, banning the mobile phones or the tablets. I think what students have to do is to learn how to use those devices for educational purposes, not just for social media, and how we can train teachers to make best of use of those technologies. So this is my comment. George or Giannis, you want to jump in and add to that before we go to Chris's question? I, I can jump in. <laughs> Giannis, do you want to jump in? So uh, due to COVID, uh, for example, uh, uh, as Mr. Sinago said that tablets and uh, cell phones are banned from schools, but due to COVID, every, every school here in Greece uh, took tablets by the Ministry of Education. So the tablets are now in schools. Uh, furthermore, AR Tutor, which is the, the AR platform we are building, um, does not have to be used in, in the classroom. It can be used out of the classroom. It can be used when a student reads from a book and he can see, for example, some videos uh, displayed on top of images. It's extra material. So it doesn't have to be uh, mandatory in, 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 a, in a school environment. It can be used out of the classroom. And th this is what we have in mind. So, uh, and, and, the, and the application doesn't need a, a, a Every student has a mobile device, so he can use it. This is our uh, goal. Exactly. And we, for, we forgot to mention on the start that you are a teacher, George. And so yeah. educators who are watching this want to talk to a teacher, write an email to George. Giannis, you want to jump in and add to that? Yes, just uh, to let you know from um, some case studies we did here in Greece, uh, for example, uh, regarding the virtual school the, and the VR application we had. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, students are not allowed to uh, turn on their phones into the school environment. However, uh, if, uh, if, we, if uh, we're going to use this mobile phone or tablet for educational reasons and specific uh, actions like virtual school, then uh, uh, we can uh, do this uh, at least at the Greek schools. And uh, we did this in the past, and also we have a great response, uh, not only from uh, the students, but also from uh, their parents. Uh, I can just uh, refer to an example that uh, uh, we need uh, more than uh, 15, let's say, mobile phones uh, in order to connect them with uh, VR headsets. And we asked for the parents to give uh, their phones, and uh, they happily responded and uh, gave uh, their phones for at least one day with the passwords, all, all this stuff to the teachers in order to run, to, to make actions uh, with uh, the virtual school. This shows that uh, the students, the teachers and the parents, uh, they want uh, to follow this, uh, this trend. They want to, to catch up the technology and, uh, and uh, overcome all these barriers. Uh, I think uh, we provide the tools and we can uh, uh, go on and use the technology and uh, deal with uh, any problems we, we have. Chris, you want to jump in now? Uh, if I can just, uh, Chris, before you go, I just a comment from one of our uh, viewers on YouTube, uh, Sam Brzezzi from um, McGill University in Montreal, Canada, uh, was very complimentary of your software and uh, said that, that um, he liked the simplicity of the software and would definitely have his students play with it in the fall. So I'm sure he will be in touch if not already. Uh, but the other thing that he added sort of Zhao building on your comment was that the reason this stuff doesn't catch on in schools because of the pressure of high stake testing, which goes back to the point I think we've talked about in this, in this show quite a bit, which is that all of these things exist within certain regulatory systems 
which don't allow for the kind of flexibility that we'd like. And in fact, this show in some ways started from a recognition that maybe the pandemic allowed us um, to ask some questions about things that we have taken for granted or things that we don't question. And I think you gave some examples there. Um, and he was hopeful that things are a little more relaxed than this high stake testing in Europe. I'm not, I mean, maybe you guys can comment on that um, because clearly in the US we, you know, over the past few years with Race to the Top and No Child Left Behind, the emphasis on testing has been very high, which sort of leaves teachers with much less flexibility in what they can do in the classroom. So again, thanks, thanks Sam for your comment and any other comments that people would want to make on that. And Chris, after that, jump on to you. So um, the whole history of media studies is that new media don't eliminate old media, they complement old media. Um, the oral tradition did not disappear when books came along, television did not eliminate face-to-face uh, -face kinds of communications and so on and so on. It's like an ecosystem where every time a new species is added, there are new niches that are created, there's a balance that takes place between old and new and, and so on. So I'm curious, as you look at your users, not, not you, but the, the people who are coming to you to taking advantage of these open tools, um, what kinds of things are they using them for? Where, where are they migrating to in terms of, of seeing a new niche in their educational ecosystem? Uh, th thank you for the question. I think it's uh, the most interesting part of uh, uh, our uh, research in, la in the in the Atma lab, because uh, uh, what we would like to see is how the educational system can be uh, ben can be can benefit out of these technologies. We are not building technology. We are trying to build the pedagogy around the technology, because I think technology is there to help students and teachers to become better, not to substitute uh, teachers. That's why AR Tutor is not, a, let's say, a platform that works independently of the reading material. It's part of, the edu of their education, okay? So uh, what we've seen so, so far is that uh, it's a, a, a huge increase in the engagement level of students and teachers, especially in those courses that traditionally seems to be boring for the, uh, for the students. And it is this interactivity and the, the, the options that are given to, to, the, to the students to be creative because they can create content. And it's the first time that we have the ability to hear the voice from the students, what should be changed in their courses in order to become more attractive, to become more, more, more interesting for them. Until now, nobody has done this experiment, uh, until, at least to my knowledge, nobody has gave them let's say the, the voice to see what they are looking in order, for example, to make a history core much more interesting for them. So we are giving this opportunity to see and work through problem-based learning, explorative learning, and using augmented reality approaches in order to check what in, in different type of courses and training programs, what they would like to, be, to, to change in order to uh, become more engaged in this type of education. Okay, so this is a, a huge, let's say, benefit and a, a huge uh, finding that we are receiving as a uh, positive feedback from the students and from the, from, the, from the teachers as well. I'm going to give the floor to Jordan and Janis if they would like to comment. Janis, if you want to add something. Um, Okay, uh, just to make uh, to be more specific, uh, we have seen that uh, when uh, people, students, teachers first uh, have the first contact with their tutor, uh, the first thing uh, that well, they are trying to do is uh, to augment a specific uh, book, a specific brochure, or uh, some uh, notes. But uh, the second step that we have uh, uh, seen that they do is uh, to, to go to more interactive material, not just to based on a specific book. So they're, uh, they're creating uh, new activities 
based on many reality technology. And this is what George said about a treasure hunt, maybe augment reality board games or generally augment reality games, collaboration games. And we have seen that using and experimenting with Air Tutor, they are through the time. Uh, they they are more creative and uh, building more and more uh, let's say complicated uh, uh, activities. So let's go to Chris's second question to give George the first crack at it. Uh, Chris, your follow up question. So another lesson from the history of educational technology is old wine and new bottles. That again and again and again a new medium comes along and people do the same old thing in it and don't take advantage of what the new medium can do. We saw this in the pandemic where people who didn't understand what the strengths of video conferencing systems like Zoom could be, just took their classroom lecture notes, walked in, did a one hour lecture and everybody experienced death by Zoom. So the old wine and new bottles is is always a problem even when a tool is freely available and i'm wondering if you um have developed yourselves any kind of professional development not not to help people use the tool technically but to help them understand uh, where its educational strengths might be or if you see people in your user population who are providing that kind of capacity building George, you want to take a taste first shot at it? Okay, so uh, what we are currently seeing uh, with uh, educators is that uh, our tool is used as a complementary tool, not as uh, it's not in the center of the of the of, of the process of the teaching process. It's uh, an asset that can make uh the the, 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 the can make the 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 content more easy to to grasp for example if you have a book that it it, it talks about the planets and you have the ar tutor and a planet pops up on top of the of the desk uh, and then the students get up and rotate the planet and see the solar system it's it it's an experience it's an immersive experience that will be uh, with them, they will not forget this. So we're we're trying to build this tool to be used as uh, with this purpose to excite students and to make uh, the, the the classroom uh, less dull and more fun. Well, I just can't help. I have to jump in here, George. Thank you. I think Chris uh, raised a very important question about old bottle or new bottle. It's in essence, AR and VR creates a different kind of learning environment that supports different types of learning. So George, when you talk about the classroom, if the content is still controlled by the teacher, if the learning task is still about uh, accessing information, if uh, uh, the testing is still about you know, how much you memorize this, and that kind of learning is, yeah, I mean, of course, AR looks more fun. For example, when you did that, you know, that person dropped, there's a disaster happening, all those kind of simulations in there. However, the new learning theory that students construct, that students must find the learning interesting, needs to be part of this. So I, I think I, I just want to just jump into that comment. But what happened in education technology when we demonstrate, they look like new, but when they enter the classroom, that's not necessarily new. So how do we uh, change schools and classes? Like Kurt was saying, I mean, we run this show, Silver Lining for Learning is really for that purpose. So, so uh, just a comment about it, okay, we have to change students, change teachers, or I, I think George, you were saying, you know, when we have this, one-to-one -one, you know devices can students organize their own learning without a teacher for example or without a teacher in front of them 
this was the purpose of AR Tutor. AR Tutor, uh, the purpose of AR Tutor was not to be used by educators, but by students. Students can create the augmented reality material. Students can experiment and share this with other students. So, uh, for example, as I said earlier, we are in a project with the, the, there is the peer learning approach, when there are two peers and one is learning from the other with augmented reality. So, uh, another uh, uh, direction that, that we are following now is personalized AR experience. For example, two students have the same book, but the augmented material is not the same. It's based on the educational needs of each student. So. We have all these in mind uh, with AR Tutor. Uh, but I think uh, uh, your point, Young, is that uh, it should uh, be a, a real shift in the educational skills uh, for teachers and for students. Because if we are still trying, let's say, uh, to memorize things, uh, this has nothing to do with the new competencies that somebody is looking in, uh, in the next generation. It's, it's the explorative learning, it's the ability to construct your own knowledge, and all this is not about technology, it's about changing the educational philosophy and what are the new skills that we are supposed to, 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 to look for in the new generation in the school of the future. So what we are trying to do is not to persuade any Ministry of Education out of the obvious, because in many areas they don't, they are hesitate or they are reluctant to see that what is obvious. That this educational system supposed to follow the new uh, era, the new era. They are remaining in the old-fashioned educational, uh, let's say, frameworks. Some of them are still valid, but some of them are out of date. What we are trying to do is to give the opportunity to the educators and the students to make use of technology enhanced learning in a more, let's say, efficient and easy way that the technology should be of the education without the fear of being tech savvy in order to use such technologies. Uh, our listening guests have asked what kind of resources do you have who should they be reading in Greece and in Europe? And you've shared some links with us, Dante Ying. Thank you for that question. If you could post in the uh, in the YouTube channel the links that Augustus has shared with us, that would be great. Before the show, Augustus also shared with us the fact that they are teaching or working with, during the pandemic, 82,000 teachers, computer science teachers, in Greece alone. So impact, so if, we're, if you have questions about impact, uh, write to Augustus and talk to him about the 82,000 plus teachers that are helping. I, wa I wonder if Augustus would like to make a comment on that, as well as a comment on what they're working on next before we go to introduce the next show. What, what's the, what, is the, what are the tools or grants that you've submitted to, uh, for, for the next projects? Uh, that you have in mind. Have I this? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, the project was a project uh, organized by the Ministry of Education in Greece. It has uh, the, um, let's say, the scope of uh, building up the, the speeding up uh, the digital skills and the competencies, not only for computing science teachers, uh, but for every teacher, regardless of their orientation. And uh, it was not, let's say, a MOOC, we were not talking about a MOOC, we are talking about personalized learning. So we had groups, more than 1,600 groups around Greece with uh, different uh, specifications uh, of uh, teachers, and they were educated in less than six months how to use, how to make, let's say, the best uh, use of uh, educational technology in their classrooms. This project uh, had the acronym uh, uh, TAF. For E, uh, I'm gonna place it here in the chat area. Uh, 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 capital. It is a, a process of speeding up this uh, uh, compend digital competencies, and uh, this project uh, managed to educate uh, an enormous amount of uh, uh, teachers in less than six months. It was the first uh, effort initiative globally that managed to. Uh, um, succeed personalized learning in that 
a kind of uh, big number of trainees in that short term. And for this reason, was uh, selected as one of the best practices in Europe during 2021 on how to uh, um, compete with COVID uh, challenges. It was a very successful case for us in Greece. Uh, it, it was an initiative uh, organized by eight universities, not uh, uh, only with uh, 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 international academic universities, and, uh, but also the university from uh, Piraeus and uh, many, others, uh, uni many other universities across, the, uh, across Greece. Yeah. And uh, if we are looking what are the next uh, things that uh, we're going to do, uh, I think that uh, this can be uh, another episode in a uh, silver lining learning to, to discuss what is the future. <laughs> it's, it's challenging. Yeah, I'm sure you have 20 more projects in mind. And if you didn't hear him, he, he's talking about the T4E project. So if you want to look up T4E, uh, I want to thank George and Giannis and Augustus for a wonderful show. And, and, and thank you for spending all the time building up those demonstrations for us. I'm sure we're not the only ones who are requesting such demonstrations. I'm sure all of you are in high demand around the world. And I hope that Silver Lining folks can meet up with you maybe in Greece or in Europe or somewhere else in the world and talk more in depth about what's going on. Uh, it's been a wonderful show. Thank you very much for that. And uh, Punya sends a thank you as well, monitoring the, the YouTube channel. And Chris and Young and I all appreciate your time and efforts here tonight in Greece, this morning in USA. Young, you want to introduce the next show? Yes. Uh, again, I want to echo my thanks. Uh, it's good to see those demonstrations. You, you definitely are building something that's interesting. And so for next episode, we're going to turn to something um, that's quite popular now, creativity. We've been talking a lot about teaching creativity, teaching entrepreneurship to students. We talk about creativity as the driving force for, uh, for the new economy. Uh, Ron Bigetto of Arizona State University and I co-edited uh, the issue of research, review of research in education, uh, RRE, that's just got published by uh, AERA, American Educational Research Association. We received a lot of uh, submissions and we selected 13 articles. That's really a highlight about the cutting edge research about democratizing creativity and entrepreneurship education. So next week, we'll talk about creativity and democratizing creative education uh, in our schools. Thank you. Mm -hmm.